your whole screen now. Great. All right, welcome, welcome everybody to this episode 83 of the Navigating Now Virtual Roundtable series. A bit of a redo from last week as we had some tef- technical difficulties, which we'll address here in just a moment. But uh, we're just thrilled to be back at the table on a very atypical Tuesday morning. Um, my name is Anthony Ewing, as always, the host of the Navigating Now Virtual Roundtable series. And uh, each week we come to you typically on Thursdays with uh, leaders that are at the forefront of a lot of the change and the opportunity that we're seeing in the business landscape. And we've got an incredible leader here today back with us again in Matt Samaglia. We'll introduce him and reintroduce him in here in just a moment. As always, we go live every week and you can find us at thoughttium.com forward slash live. We want to uh, thank all of our communities, particularly our YouTube and LinkedIn communities, those folks that stop by in the LinkedIn feed or register to attend. We want to thank you for joining every week. We had a great start of the discussion last week with Matt around the NFT space and how it's starting to emerge in not only our everyday vernacular, but in our everyday business world. And we're going to continue that discussion today. We'll make sure that we revisit some of the key concepts that uh, really were helping us build context in last week's discussion. So again, I want to reintroduce Matt Samaglia. He is the co-founder of Altion. And uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about um, his, his company, uh, his company's vision, because it is absolutely at the forefront of a lot of the change and the shifts that we're seeing in today's marketplace. And that's why we love to have uh, co-founders and, and leaders like Matt at the table. Today, we're going to be talking about NFT technology, particularly, and how it can make its way and should be making its way into some of your planning and your thinking as a small business leader. So Matt, Thank you so much for joining us uh, again here on Tuesday morning. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thanks for having me. Wonderful. So uh, let's do a quick reintroduction. Matt, tell us a little bit about you and, and Altium. Yeah, I mean, Altium really came as, um, as, a, as a need, right? And I, I, I started my career about 20 years ago by um, building a production company. And over the course of about 15 or 20 years, uh, you know that that production company. I was I was doing a lot of work with Fortune um, 50 companies, 100 companies, um, and you know helping them with their communications work, and um, working with a lot of ad agencies uh, around the world, and you know communicating brands and brand messaging. And um, what was interesting is after I had exited that business, I was doing some consulting work, and I was working with um, actually a pretty large uh, agency. And I was seeing a lot of the parallels um, of issues that they were having. And it was, it was sort of this reoccurring problem that uh, was a pattern throughout my career um, in, in the ad world and, and having a production company. And um, I saw an opportunity and I, and I saw an opportunity in the sense of there's a huge problem and there's a huge underserved market of people who don't have access to enterprise class tools. And um, so what we built at Altion uh, at the core is a, uh, we call it a production ecosystem. And, and it really handles a lot of the various challenges that content creators have on a daily basis, whether it's, um, you know, getting content from one place to another, archiving content, um, being organized uh, with footage that you might have uh, from a shoot. I know we used to go on shoots and we'd have stacks of hard drives that we'd be FedExing across the country or if not the world. And, um, you know, it, it's just it's just odd that in today's day and age with the Internet and, um, you know, now that sort of the cloud exists, um, that there hadn't been a, a software platform um, available to this this very, you know, underserved market. Yeah, and you you definitely are serving a market that is you know growing. And as a, another small business owner here, somebody that's been building a, a company and a brand over the course of the last five years, we've called on what some would say the creator economy or creator communities to help us grow in ways that we would have had to bring in you know massive production companies you know ten or fifteen years ago. So you know Thoughtium has been the the benefit of the communities that you serve. And, I, and I'm curious. I think that you know, even this, even this is an example, right? Yeah. I, I think that you know this, what we're doing right now, um, is a very good example of you know five, ten years ago, virtually impossible, and yeah. you know you would have needed a satellite truck or a whole crew of people in order to have video quality that looks this good and a transmission 
um, you know, streaming service that, you know, would be this powerful to, to be able to um, push HD video. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we're, we're dumbfounded, like on a week by week basis, what we're able to do with very simple, you know, consumer grade tools that really, you know, not only allow us to create a message and get it out there, but really help, uh, you know, strengthen, you know, Thoughtium's brand and, and ultimately grow the, the business. Um, and again, you know, I think to your point, I think uh, back to, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you know, had I been standing where I am today, trying to build a, a management consulting company, uh, a community platform and an overall brand, I, 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 I would have had far less tools. It would have taken a, a lot longer. And I, I get the sense that the acceleration of these tools is starting to really steepen, right? And, and how does that impact you know, your business as you think about developing these very progressive platforms? Well, I mean, look at 15, 20 years ago, my company was pressing DVDs. I mean, like that's, that's the example of it. Or we were, I remember going to VHS duplication houses uh, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, getting hundreds of VHS copies made of a production that we would make for a company that was sending out for marketing video. You know, I mean, that was just, that was just 20 years ago. And it's kind of yeah. hard to get your head wrapped around the fact that technology has progressed so much in two decades. I mean, it's just astronomical, the speed in which technology is uh, ramping up and, you know, how we are learning so much from the past. And I think that, um, you know, as we get into this discussion, obviously we're going to be talking more about NFTs, but if you think about this progression that web 3.0 has, right. Um, you know, it's, it web 2.0 hasn't been around all that long, but right. if you look at past civilizations, right, I'm going to just stop for a second on the technology front, right. Great. But if you look at past civilizations, the next civilization always learns from the previous one, right. So yeah. you, you think about even Chicago is a great example, right. Chicago built sort of um, post New York in some senses, you know, you always, uh, Chicago always says it's the second city. And I think that there's, um, there's a lot of really great advances that Chicago has over New York and, um, you know, alleyways, perfect example, right? There's no, there's no, you know, trash on the street. And it's mm -hmm. because they learned from a previous civilization that had built up and didn't put this infrastructure in place um, just for handling trash. So uh, again, yeah. I, I think that, you know, when we look at web 3.0, um, it, it, it largely over the last, you know, two decades has grown into something that we would have been never imagined um, 20 years ago. And, um, and I think that, I, I think that what's so strong to think about today for web 3.0 is we truly don't know what it will be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, I, I, and I also appreciate you setting that context because I think it even helps us uh, dive into a discussion around Web3 and NFTs, which have very quickly become, you know, uh, almost buzzwords. Um, they, uh, too many people are kind of this new and nebulous technology that, you know, is coming at us full steam ahead. Uh, but to your earlier points, and, and again, to build context, you know, I, I love to remind people that, uh, you know, we have been through this before and you know how many uh waves of new technology including web one and web two need to come uh need to have our almost pushback uh dissent um disbelief uh and then you know need to almost kind of like work itself out to where everybody starts to really understand and adopt and that that happens over and over and over I would have to say, you know, um, being fortunate enough to be a part of the generation that, you know, lived through the advent of, of Web 1 and Web 2, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, a technology uh, come at us as quickly as Web 3 um, and with so much opportunity. So I almost want to start there, Matt. How were you introduced to Web 3? Like, how, what, what, what came across your, your, your computer monitor or in a discussion that piqued your interest? And, and when was that? You know, I, I largely got uh, aware of, you know, blockchain, um, I would, I would say five years ago, I was working on, um, I was, I was sort of wrapping up my, my ad agency at the time and somebody that I was working with, we had been talking about it quite a bit. And um, what was interesting at the time, I was even, I, I will admit, right at that time period, I was sort of like, 
I don't really get it. Uh, I don't really see how this is going to advance things. And, and somebody that I was working with, a colleague, was really stressing the importance of um, of the fact of of using it as more of a utility. And you know, during that time period, you have to also take in, take into consideration. Um, it was very much web point one point oh when you know it it started becoming somewhat malicious, right? There were some yeah. dark dark web, right? Kind of, kind of became vernacular. And, you know, at that time period, it, it was, it was, you know, we're in the wild west today. I don't even know what it was then, you know, it was like <laughs> the dark age or something. And, and, you know, it was, it was something that largely was being used um, for, again, malicious reasons or nefarious reasons. And I think that we have now as society started to look at what um, what people are doing in that space and really advancing that technology. And I think that, um, you know, we're seeing now, uh, I, I saw an article yesterday about MasterCard. Uh, you know, they're, they're coming out with, uh, you know, 15 new different um, areas around how they're adapting to a web mm -hmm. 3.0 strategy. So, you know, back to your, back to your first question, you know, it's, it's really, um, I had been known, I'd known about it for about five years. The funny story uh, for me was about three years ago, I was in an investor meeting for, um, for Altion actually. And I told one of the investors that, you know, we had a little bit of a uh, blockchain thought process and how we would like to build on our platform, especially for security reasons. And they kind of laughed me out of the room. I mean, they just said, you know, this is not a thing. I don't understand why you would even pay attention to that. Um, but, you know, today, look at, look at where we are. And, and where you are today is now just a few short years later. And, and I, I would venture to guess that, um, you know, it, it, it was probably in the last maybe six to 12 months that you really got into the NFT space. You have most recently launched a very exciting NFT project. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about that, but I also want to underscore, you know, uh, just how exciting it is to, to, to go deep in learning about something and then almost immediately be able to apply it in your small business. So Matt, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you were introduced to NFT technology and then how quickly it came to fruition in this project that you launched about a month ago. Well, I think it's easy to innovate when you have a good base or a, a strong yeah. con, uh, context of technology. And, you know, our, I'm so proud of our team at Altion because we have over the last two years built an incredible software platform for content management. And because we have this at the core, we're able to innovate at rapid speeds now. And, you know, we, we kind of all joke that we've, you know, it's, it's sort of like we had to eat our, um, you know, our vegetables before we can go to our dessert. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yep. that's really where we are in, in the sort of progression of our company, where we're starting to innovate on a daily basis. We're coming up with ideas. Even last week, we, we sort of came up with an idea within the team based off of already our beta prototype of an NFT publisher. And to give context around what we're building, so um, Altion at its core is a content management system and a cloud hosting platform for digital material. So we knew that our, um, our users largely are creative people. And we always had this concept in mind of publishing. So typically, if you're a content creator, you're having to log in and out of several different platforms on a given day just to complete your work. And we knew that we wanted to have all of that sort of housed inside one platform or an ecosystem, right? And to be able to publish out to YouTube or Facebook or Vimeo or TikTok and so on. Um, but we didn't want to just stop at that. We knew that we wanted to be able to mint smart contracts on various blockchains. So we focused on um, our, our first beta, which, which you were referring to, which was very exciting. Uh, we were able to launch two weeks ago, our first smart contract. And, um, and, and it was for an artist that, you know, largely is not very big into technology, um, but, but has a good strong context of what NFTs mean for her and for her, her base of collectors. And I think that when, when you start to look at that, um, having a no code solution for creatives, um, you know, our one of our taglines for the company is we let creators create. And I think that that's mm -hmm. true to the core of how we're building this, this uh, NFT publisher or a launch pad. And, you know, so we, so we launched on Ethereum a couple of weeks ago, our first smart contract. We'll be focusing on Flow and Polygon and Solana throughout the next couple of months as we continue to, um, build more beta prototypes of 
our platform, but largely the idea is at some point this year, we would like to have our creators that already have their content housed in Altion be able to click one button on a trusted source and mm. mint out their content onto a blockchain. Yeah, and, and why is that important for content creators? I think part of it is security. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I think about you and I every day probably use platforms or, you know, buy brands just because we trust them. There's a huge mm -hmm. trust factor involved there. And with creatives, you know, this is, this is their hard earned, uh, you know, work that they've, they've, you know, put a lot of time and effort and energy into. And I think that, that, uh, you know, one of the unfortunate things that's happened throughout the last couple of months or a couple of years with uh, web 3.0 that I think is starting to get cleaned up is, um, you know, there were a lot of people out there that were scamming people and a lot of yeah. people out there um, that were, were, you know, doing some pretty bad things. So I think to have a trusted platform or a trusted partner that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis and by us, a lot, you know, uh, providing a service um, that we know is very secure for our users. Um, I think that that, that will just help them a lot. Totally agree. And, you know, for those folks who maybe are new to the NFT space that, you know, we promised that this was not going to be an NFT 101 discussion, but I do think it's important, Matt, for you and I to maybe go back and forth a little bit on uh, the utility of NFTs and the application of NFTs, you know, from my perspective and, and even hearing a little bit about your project, uh, you know, NFT technology and smart contracts on the blockchain allow creators and artists to have more access and visibility allowing their artwork to become more prominent, um, allowing their art, artwork to become more accessible and ultimately uh, fueling or potentially building an entirely new community around really great art that uh, was maybe didn't exist before, this community didn't exist before. Uh, and, and I wanna maybe let's talk about that application first in terms of the impact of NFTs on creators and, and artists and then we'll talk a little bit about how that might translate to the application of NFTs in small businesses. But touch a little bit on, you know, kind of if I'm an artist or a creator, how am I thinking about NFT technology? And, you know, uh, why is this, this new application in Altion so important? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit it, hit it spot on a second ago with the fact that it's community driven. You know, I yeah. think that largely artists, um, you know, true artists are able to go out and build a community um, in a very rapid pace, you know, going back to my earlier analogy of VHS tapes, right? Like, let's just think about that for a second. When we created a VHS tape, we would create about a hundred of uh, a particular video. They would mail it out to various people and maybe five people actually put it in their VHS player and played it, right? So your sort of right. adoption rate of watching that content was very low. Um, when we think about the web, when we think about NFTs, you're now able to mint something out today and literally hit hundreds of millions of people all in a split second. So I think that that's really incredible. There's an artist right now. Um, it's a 13 year old girl. She's been on a lot of, uh, um, you know, news lately. And, you know, she's, she's now a multimillionaire because mm -hmm. she created this, um, this art that's very beautiful. And, you know, she has built this community around, um, her artwork and what it embodies. And I think that, you know, that would not have been possible uh, in previous years. You know, she may have drawn something on a piece of paper or on a canvas and only a handful of people in her school or in her mm -hmm. local community um, would have been able to see that. But again, because of the internet, because of the age that we live in, hundreds of millions of people now are, are able to have access to that. And I think that for, for the art community as a whole, um, you know, Art is meant to invoke thought and, you know, discussion. And, um, you know, I think that what you guys are doing in using NFTs as more of a utility, you and I have had this conversation, you know, for the last six months on what you guys are doing for your dinner series. And I think that that's, that's such a powerful way of using, um, you know, a technology based system um, for, for really coming together and using it in a different form than it was initially intended for. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that's a, you know, so, so if, if NFT technology for artists allows, uh, you know, greater communities and unique uh, access to my art as a creator or an artist, think about that same approach, greater access, broader communities to your business or your offerings. 
And that's where, you know, uh, you know, my brain almost overnight kind of clicked as I got closer to this technology and understood that yes, the front end of a lot of NFTs today are artwork. And a lot of people would argue that there's a little bit of a bubble happening right now in terms of, you know, static artwork that's kind of being generated and creating a lot of hype that's being flipped for, you know, a lot of money. And, and when is this kind of bubble going to burst? And I think that's a very natural um uh, side effect of a, of a growing technology. There's definitely going to be a swell in the marketplace, but to me, that's a segment or a fraction of the benefits of NFT technology. And we're starting to see now organizations, both major brands and smaller businesses like ours start to look at, okay, what's really behind this? You know, the, the, the reason why, you know, some of these kind of static pieces of art, these pixelated pictures of apes and things of that nature are um, are really blowing up is yes a little bit of the hype and the popularity of it but also it's it's broadening communities it's bringing people together and it's allowing people to have a little bit of ownership and and create a little bit of their own brand identity through these NFTs and you start to think about how you can apply that to again your business or your product offerings for us it's just another way to to create community. And if the front end is an NFT, which you know we'll talk a little bit about our, our, our dinner series, if the front end is an NFT, behind it then are commitments that we make to these small cohorts of NFT owners, much like we would, you know, a membership or um, or much like we do currently, um, you know, outside of the blockchain. These are commitments and and streams of value that we're able to offer our community in perpetuity. So let's talk a little bit about the utility of NFTs. I'll have you share just some of your thoughts in terms of, you know, as you look beyond um, kind of the front end, the, the art uh, and cre creation of NFTs. Let's talk about maybe some of the ways that you're thinking about the utility and the application of NFTs in, in a, a business context. Well, I think, I think that, you know, just, just the, the spirit of uh, Web3, right, is Again, community, and I think that um, what's so great about it is whoever is sort of behind the smart contract or um, behind the idea of of a piece of artwork. Again, not to not to you know go back to that too much, but it's like I love the the spirit of the fact that when a piece of artwork gets sold on a secondary market, um, the artist gets royalties off of that. You know, so I think mm -hmm. that that's really important to to highlight. I think again, as as you as you guys are highlighting the fact that um, you're using it for a very different type of utility, not necessarily to make money uh, quickly or, uh, you know, to sort of get rich off of an ape, if you will. Um, <laughs> I, I think that it's, it's more around something that's unique, something that's, um, you know, only a select group of people can hold. Um, I, I look at the utility factor as security. You know, I think that yeah. largely, you know, creators, of any kind, um, you know, once your content is out there, a lot of times people are able to rip that off or steal it. You know, we're looking at a lot of different um, technologies at Altion, whether it's, um, you know, forensic watermarking to make sure that, uh, you know, footage that is uploaded to the system that's then put on to a secondary marketplace within Altion for, for users to be able to have access to that content. Um, by putting that forensic mark, watermark inside of uh, the, the content and linking it through a blockchain, we're able to know who has ownership of that content. And, and you know, if, if it's being sold on a secondary or third marketplace, um, that content creator, the original content creator, um, is able to receive royalties off of that. And I think that that's really mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. because this is work that people... Um, have spent a lot of time on or have spent a lot of uh, energy on. And um, it's very important, um, you know, to, to clean a lot of that ecosystem up. And, you know, when we think about, um, you know, past and, and how content and digital content has evolved, um, it's, it's now everywhere. And, and I don't care if you're, um, you know, a TikTok uh, you know, influencer or somebody that is a huge brand, you know, everyone is, is grappling with how do you secure your, your content? And I think that there's a lot of utility there, especially around um, when we think about web 3.0 and, and how we can securitize that. I love that. Again, you start to, you start to unpack the different layers of, 
of, of value and utility in this technology. And you start to see that it's so much more than, you know, simply, uh, you know, unique and validated pieces of digital art. Uh, I'll share a little bit on the Thought Team NFT project. Um, our Create the Space project that we launched uh, back in February uh, was an opportunity for us to really demonstrate uh, best learning practices. You know, uh, the, the spirit of the, the project for us was to get in and, and roll our sleeves up and get involved in this technology in a way that represents and reflects our ethos as an organization, which is far from a necessarily a technology firm. You know, we are all about creating the space and creating connection and community, both with our clients and those folks that, uh, you know, um, we, we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, you know, what, one of the things that we thought about was how can we make NFT technology even more human and how can we start to mirror, you know, this kind of nebulous concept, you know, and, and Matt and I are convinced that, 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 you know, 10 years from, from now, these probably won't be called NFTs. There's probably going to be a more user-friendly, you know, uh, overarching name for this technology. Uh, but we wanted to make this human. And so if, you, if you're a small business owner, if you're in client services, think about a gathering or a, or a dinner that you would have with a, a small subset of your community or your clients. Uh, the NFT technology allows you to not only commemorate uh, you know, those smaller communities with a nice piece of art that you might be able to commission from a local artist. We leveraged, uh, you know, someone from within our community to create uh, a really nice piece of art to commemorate a six to eight person dinner that we host every quarter. And, you know, the dinner goes the way that it has for hundreds and hundreds of years, like-minded individuals coming together, breaking bread, sharing best practices, supporting each other in community, talking shop, talking business, there were some connections made. There were some referrals made. Everything that you would need by simply just getting in a room with other entrepreneurs. The NFT technology allowed us to both commemorate that event, again, with a, a unique piece of art. So it's almost you know, people's kind of token of that evening. And as well, it allowed us to stay in community with that small cohort of individuals that attended that dinner by way of the smart contract. So on top of the piece of art that was uh, delivered uh, or transferred to each individual that joined the dinner, they also have unique access to Thoughtium and our services, which means merch drops. It means one-on-one -on -one coaching. It means early access to some of our workshops. And again, that's absolutely something that you can do in more of an analog fashion. Um, as NFT technology starts to build and grow, uh, and Web3 or the metaverse becomes the place that we all have this kind of unique identity, we're going to want to be able to display and show and share these communities that we're a part of. And so although the eight people that attended our dinner in February probably are the holders of maybe one or two NFTs, you can imagine a world, in, and I believe in a few short years, where we're going to have more of a digital identity and it's going to be made of these impressions that we've had with, you know, our friends and our family events that we've gone to. Uh, and, and that starts to really open up again, more of the utility of this. And I hope that example, you know, for those folks on the line makes it very real in terms of the way that you could leverage NFT technology. You know, this, we did not have to outsource this, which was something that we built on our own. It was, a, you know, a lot of hours on the weekends learning about how to, to develop an NFT and mint an NFT and, and put it on OpenSea. Um, you know, the open marketplace, but um, it just was a wonderful way of kind of marrying the, the technology and the in-person. And, um, and Matt, I know you were a, a bit of an influence on, on me to just try, to just go for it, you know, to just um, put it out there. And you gave me a really, really good tip on making sure that our community knew that we were out there demonstrating these best learning practices. And um, for us, it's paid it back. Uh, you know, this this project has paid back in in droves, not just in the communities that we're forming around these dinners, but it really has been a, a great, almost recruiting tool, um, a big part of our brand, and again, a big part of who we are in creating the space. Yeah, I think that especially you know after the last two years that we've had uh, of being apart, and and you know, yeah. I think that it's truly a time that we're coming together and um, in in newfound ways, right? And we're meeting new people, and and we're uh, experiencing new things, um, not to date you and I too much, but we, <laughs> we, we both know what a dial up modem sounded like. Right. And, and I think that when we were 
uh, early days for me, you know, even going back to Prodigy or uh, AOL, right? Um, GeoCities, yeah. GeoCities, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, when we think about those past platforms, you know, me as a kid, I knew I was trying to push the limits of what I was able to do with a with a dial up modem back then. <laughs> right. And, you know, my mom would be yelling at me to get off the, off the phone because she needed to make a phone call or something. But, you know, I think that, you know, what we have now also, I think what's so exciting is we have a generation of young people that are truly innovative in such a way that they grew up at an era where, you know, there was super fast internet, you know, way faster than what you and I had as kids. And, you know, I, I, I sort of, um, I gave the reference in an article that I wrote a couple months ago in the sense that in the mid nineties, nobody would have said, oh, I'm going to go read a book on my computer because your computer was right. a huge clunky monitor, had probably a pretty low resolution. And after a while, your eyes were very strained. Uh, but, you know, think about it now, I, I hold my phone in my, my hand and I don't even think of it as a phone anymore, right? It's a right. true computer. I mean, what I have in my hand is, is more powerful than all of the computers that I had as a kid combined. And, yep. and I think that that's something very special. And yeah. I'm very excited about this new generation of people because um, they're growing up in this age that's just absolutely amazing when anything is possible. Yeah. And you know, by leveraging and harnessing this technology in different ways, um, you know, we're going to see things in the coming years that we would have never even been able to talk about today because it wouldn't have been able to, you know, we wouldn't have been able to conceive whatever that thought process would be. So I think that's yeah. what it's really exciting. And, and you know, Altion really, uh, we, we sort of always position ourselves in the sense that um, when you think about a gold mine, and I, I give this reference uh, a lot, when you think about a gold mine, you know, the, the companies that really succeeded during a gold rush were the pick and shovel companies, right? Love that. They're the, Love they're the companies that were really at the core of a gold rush. So if you go to, you know, city A or town A and there's a gold mine there and everyone just, you know, rushes in and they, you know, take all the gold out of the gold mine. Sure, everyone got rich in that town, but the second that there's no more gold in that town, um, it dried up and people went out of business and, you know, people went bankrupt. But but gold mine B and C and D are now sprouting up. The company at the nucleus of all of that was the pick and shovel company, right? Yeah. They were the supplier. And I, I think that, you know, when you look at Altion, our core mission is to be in the center of it all. We don't mm -hmm. want to be the end product of, um, you know, how people are distributing out their content or um, distributing out their, their, you know, various communities. We want to be the supplier of that. And, you know, by, by being a true secure, trusted resource for these content creators to largely have access to, uh, you know, tools that are really only accessible to enterprise class clients. Um, you know, it's, it's been really a mission of ours to support this community and make sure that creators are, are able to really push the limits of what they want to achieve. Yeah. I, I love that. You know, you, you've, You've mentioned that analogy before, and it's really stuck with me. Although I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm starting to even extrapolate it even more. So, you know, if you all at Altion are the, the, the pick and shovel organization, I just wonder if you know we at Thotium are almost like the canary <laughs> for the coal mine, <laughs> because it's, go. it's, you know, with, with these new technologies and these new methodologies. Um, I know I personally, and and I can speak for my team as well, almost feel a sense of responsibility to be out there exploring, uh, to be out there kind of pushing a little bit. It's, it's, it's why, you know, I started a business to begin with. It's so that, uh, you know, I can play with stuff like this, uh, much like I did, you know, 20, 25 years ago, you know, when we were at the mercy of dial up internet. And I love that you kind of made that, that generational comparison, uh, and yes, the, the the generation that's coming up almost has this expectation that, you know, we lead with technology and technology supports and enhances our lives. I think we were more at the front end of it where it was kind of like we were kind of pushing and saying, you know, technology should be a part of our lives. Um, I would argue that today's generation needed us, the canaries, you know, needed us, the the uh, the early explorers, you know, kind of struggling with some of these new technologies. And I feel so fortunate to be at this point in my career 
uh, surrounded by a team of individuals that truly believe that we should be out in front, that uh, it will require a little bit of trying and testing and failing. And, uh, you know, Web3 and, and, and NFTs have just become this incredible opportunity for us to demonstrate what is a core value of, of ours. And it sounds like it has for Altion as well, too. But I, I think it's also responsibility. Uh, I yeah. think that you you really kind of you know hit on that a little bit, but I think that we have a tremendous opportunity right now. We're 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 a generation right now of people that are witnessing a new digital currency or a new currency. Period. Right? Just just yeah. not even digital. It's just a new currency, and um, we're seeing you know the government really think hard about um, the financial system uh, and and how that's operating and. Um, you know, this is the first time since our country has been founded, uh, you know, that, that we've had this debate mm. because who would have thought even 10 years ago that we would be having a debate today around, well, what is the future of the dollar? What is the future of currency? And I think that we have a tremendous opportunity uh, and responsibility um, as, a, as a, you know, civilization to really think through, okay, what didn't work in the past or why have we gotten to this point? And, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Because evolution is always, um, you know, a, a forward process. But um, when you really look at, you know, what hasn't worked in the past, regardless of, of what we're doing, um, you always want to improve on it. So I think that, again, yeah. we, have a, we have a responsibility to, right now to really learn from the past and, and truly make things better for future generations. Yeah, I love that point, and I think that's a, a really good point to 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 almost conclude on. Um, you know, this responsibility that you talk to talk about is what brought you know the thought team community together with with yours, and it's what brought you and I together. It's it's interesting, you know, you and I, as business leaders and as technologists, we 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 you know, you and I have a, a biweekly touch point. You know, every other week we get on the line for for 30, 45 minutes, and. I, I've never felt such a, a healthy and exciting responsibility to getting on the line with, with somebody than I do with people like you, because I know that you're at the forefront. I know that you really feel this responsibility and this opportunity to continue to kind of try and test. And I know that that is a space for me to be able to come in and, and, and provide even some of my pushing forward and, and some of my energy in that space as well, too. And, you know, we just, we want to thank you and, and the entire team at Altion for, you know, everything that you're doing out in the marketplace uh, and particularly you, Matt, the leadership that you're showing on a day-to-day -day basis. I appreciate it. I'm always here. Okay. I want to, um, do you have a couple minutes for a lightning round? We, we're doing these lightning rounds Go for it. and um, I, I think they're great and our community loves them because it get, they get to know you a little bit more on a, a you know, personal leadership basis. Um, so a couple quick questions. Um, these have not been planned, so I'm going to just kind of select them at, at random. Uh, Matt, what are you reading, watching, or listening to today? Uh, reading anything that I can uh, get my hands on, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, you know, and, and, and again, I want to go back to what I was saying before. I'm also learning about the past. You know, I'm, I'm huge yeah. into seeing, you know, history and, and learning about um, technology of the past, because I think that mm. it gives you a huge context of how we got to certain places in life. Love that. When you are, you know, at your standing desk or at your office and you take a break from a little bit of what's going on in front of you and you're gazing out the window, kind of daydreaming, what are you thinking about? Man, I, I, I don't know. I don't have those moments. Do you? I, I, <laughs> because it, typically for me, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I end one video call and it's immediately <laughs> like apologizing to the next one that I ran late on the previous one. So um, yeah. I don't have too many of those moments. Yeah. I, you know, I, I have far few, uh, fewer of those today than, than I did when, you know, a couple of solid meetings a day and, and some travel time from one conference room to the next allowed you a little bit of that. But I'm I'm very aware of that. I'm very yeah, aware I mean, of 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 the lack of gazing that's happening today, um, personally for, and and amongst my team. For me, again, not to sound too corny, but it's it's really I'm amazed at what my team is able to accomplish every day. And yeah. you know, when I I, I periodically uh, throughout a day will go into Altion and I'll poke mm -hmm. around and. Um, you know, I, I, I have great people that are actually sitting across from me. So I'm not just saying this because of that, but, um, you know, I will send out little notes here and there that says, Hey, it would be really great if we thought about this or thought about that. 
And um, the, the part that excites me the most are the days when they're like, we already thought of that. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's on our product uh, list coming up soon. Mm -hmm. And those are the cool moments because I came up with this idea for Altion. Um, I think, it, I think, I don't want to say that I came up with the idea three or four years ago. I think that it's been an evolutionary process yeah. over the course of my professional career starting two decades ago. And um, it truly is the platform that I always wished existed when I was running my production company. And again, when I'm having those little moments, if I do have moments to kind of gaze out the window, if you will, I'm thinking truly about how I'm, I'm solving a huge problem mm -hmm. uh, that has existed for a very long time. What is the uh, earliest memory that you have uh, that would lend itself to what you're doing today? Whether when that, I was a, yeah, yeah. I, I have two memories actually. One, when I was four years old, my parents had a Sony uh, eight millimeter video camera um, delivered to the house. And I remember literally, I remember opening the box and it was in this like silver hard <laughs> travel case and opening it up and just being in awe of this camera and and my mom would always get mad at me because I was always stealing the camera and playing with it and you know videotaping things um and I also have really fond memories of our first computer and we, we had an IBM PC yeah. junior grew up in Boca Raton Florida where the PC was invented and um we we were very fortunate as a family to have a computer again when I was around four years old and I remember, you know, putting floppy disks in and I remember loading the computer up and running a command at four, uh, you know, to uh, execute a file <laughs> that would play uh, like King's Quest or, or, you know, one of these, one of these other video games that, that, you know, was an eight bit, um, you know, um, resolution on a, yep. on a really garbage screen at the time. But again, I, I think that that, that time period and thinking back at that, those are, those are some of my fondest mm -hmm. early memories of technology. And um, again, I was very fortunate that my, my parents did, you know, sort of let me, you know, they gave me a little bit of a longer leash when it came to technology because they, they wanted me to explore it. Couldn't agree more. I mean, shout out to the parents that enabled this sense of creativity. Uh, I'll also give a shout out to the transition from King's quest to space quest. If you remember was like mind blowing because I think the resolution yeah. went up a little bit and space yep. quest was like a whole nother realm. Oh, I can, you said that and it brought back like the sounds and even like the, 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 the MIDI, uh, background yeah. music. <laughs> she were kind of navigating the game. Yeah. Oh man. Such nostalgia. Uh, okay. Last question. Think about something that you admire about yourself and fill in the blank. Uh, if the world were more like me, it would be what? Organized. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> no, I, I think that a lot of people that know me very well know that I tend to be a bit OCD. And I think that that's what also helps me build a organizational tool for the creative industry. Um, yeah. I, I think, you know, if you open up my closet, um, my mom even jokes at me in, in the sense that, you know, everything's very organized and color coded. I have sort of a uniform that I wear every day because um, I'm, I'm not very fa fashion forward, if you will. Yeah. Um, but it's also just, you know, it's so much easier for me to wake up in the morning and not have to think about, you know, what am I going to wear today? Um, but, but, you know, again, I think that if you, if you really wanted to sum it up into one word, I would say organized. I love that. Uh, so how organized did you feel last Thursday when we were 13 minutes in and <laughs> everything, you know, the, you know, everything fell apart and, and the show abruptly ended? <laughs> you know, I think that's the, that's the sort of sick thing about me is I love chaos and I love a mess. Yeah. And, and yeah. I love when um, I love when there's challenges in front of me. And when I worked with NBC Network, this was a really great um, example. You know, I would I would literally fly into hurricanes or fly into yeah. disasters or when some sort of chaos would erupt in a city or town. Um, you know, I was there at the front line covering it for the network. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was often, you know, how do you coordinate uh, satellites uh, in, in terms of being able to transmit in a, and engineers that are on the ground building a satellite with you or having a satellite truck 
um, the correspondent, making sure that they're taken care of, yeah. uh, making sure that the content is getting sent to, you know, 30 Rock in New York. And, um, you know, that sort of organized, uh, uh, you know, organizing chaos is, is actually something that I really thrive on. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, you know, even, even last week when that happened, in my mind, it's sort of, okay, well, what can we do to overcome that next time? Mm-hmm. And again, it's, it's going with a lot of the theme of today. It's learning from the past. Couldn't agree more learning from the past and, and, and also just really appreciating, you know, the processes as much as we, we don't like, you know, uh, major technical difficulties, it's absolutely a part of the process, you know, to go live week after week now, you know, 83 episodes in, um, we've rarely had that happen, but when it does, you know, I always turn around and take a deep breath and say, uh, you know, as a, 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 as a creator myself, you've got to love moments like that because it almost immediately raises the bar to the point where, you know, you've got to get better next time and you've got to learn kind of how to organize a little bit, of that, a little bit of that chaos. And to your point, I liken that to the world that we're in, in, in web three, there's a lot of, um, messiness. There's a lot of kind of navigating. There's a lot of trying and failing. It feels a lot like, again, pre 1.0 when, you know, you're kind of like almost like building computers and you get that blue screen of death, like over and over and over. Um, but that's what allows you to kind of build awareness and, and understanding and agility to navigate these new technologies. So, uh, Matt, thank you so much for, for sharing uh, so many great insights today. Um, you know, a lot about Altion. How can people, you know, find you and learn more about Altion? I mean, go to Altion.io and, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to schedule one-on-one meetings with people. There's a, a link right, right down on, on, the, on the website where you can schedule a one-on-one with one of our customer success uh, staff. Um, they're, they're pretty much always at the ready. They're really phenomenal people. They know the product in and out. Um, but you know, go in and explore it. And and again, I I think that the biggest thing for us is, um, everyone is creating content these days and it's about how you're organizing that content, um, you know, in any way. And I think that as a brand, it's very important for you to own your content, uh, because you're hiring lots of different creators to then work off of it, or even internal teams being able to have access to it. It'll save you money. Uh, it'll, it'll, by being organized, oftentimes will save you money. Uh, you don't have to go and reshoot something or, or think that it doesn't exist because it probably does. Um, but again, I think that, you know, go to altion.io, check that out, sign up for an account. Uh, it's free for a couple of weeks. And then, um, and, and the cost price point is, extremely low for the comparison of product that you actually get. Yeah, that's wonderful. Again, thank you so much, Matt, for sharing the table. Uh, Thanks for your flexibility as always. And uh, I personally want to thank you for your leadership and and your guidance and your mentorship. It it really means a lot to to myself and our entire team here at Thoughtium. I'm here anytime for you guys. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, Speaking of, we are going to be live again this Thursday. So every Thursday at three o'clock, we go live. Thoughtium.com forward slash live is where you can watch this episode and all of our previous episodes. Um, We go live to LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, again, particularly uh, just love our LinkedIn community and a lot of the engagement that we see there. We get a lot of comments on folks that stop by in the feed, but know that you can watch full episodes at Thoughtium.com forward slash live. And next week, we've got another incredible guest, Michaela Bell. She's one of our favorite people in the leadership development space. Uh, She has done a lot of really new age. um, She's brought a lot of new age thinking to designing and developing leadership development program, working with uh, small cohorts of individuals to really elevate their collective sense of self and others. And Michaela is going to be at the table talking talking to us and with us about uh, learning and development design techniques. Really excited to have Michaela back at the table next week. As always, We want to uh, thank everybody for joining today, and we look forward to seeing everybody on Thursday at three o'clock. So long.